since since you've experienced all of what Troy Lightfoot brings the world, I mean, absolutely, like, we're he he's he's almost like an evil mastermind, but a benevolent evil mastermind, right? Wouldn't you say that's the vibe <laughs> that Troy gives off? Troy could be the the benevolent evil mastermind that is even killed until he is not. And then, yeah. and then and then the plan then the plan becomes real but he need, he needs he to gives off don't mess with me like absolutely so. i know that i'm smarter than you i'm just not gonna throw it in your face so. <laughs> he just, just talked for 20 minutes and people are like clients are like eating out of his hand like like popcorn going what tell tell me tell me more well just just you should if you listen to this and obviously it's recording, make sure, make sure to get this in there because it's like, if you're out there and you're a fan, you should, you should explain to Troy why, if you want to really get an idea like Troy and like some of the challenges he's facing, what I found always really helps ask him why he does not like the smashing pumpkins. I don't know why don't he's, he's got something against them. Like there's so many bands in the nineties that are like wonderful. And like, sure. if there was a list like he'll tell you why everybody else is better than Smashing Pumpkins. It's great. So I don't... yeah, if you're out there, make sure to make sure to do that for sure. conferences conferences absolutely all right so i so you and i are both part of the team that's putting on agile 2023 um we'll talk about agile advice uh here shortly but what i wanted to do was start kind of big picture like how like a how long have you been going to agile conferences because i don't know i just know that like so for those playing the home game I, I know Chris the same way that I know Paul Tevis, Jake Calabrese, all people that I consider wonderful friends days. and respected wonderful colleagues. Days. We just days. bumped into each other from knowing the same people at a conference. And you're like, hey, I see your name on a badge. Guess I know you now, right? Yep. That's how I know all of these people. I'm I'm really, really lucky that anybody even answers the phone when I call, but <laughs> I am very, very, very lucky. So tell me, right, as someone that we just know each other, I don't know when we met. I just know I that we talk. do. And yeah. I know that we're cool. So that's all there is to it. That's all that matters. What was your first one? And how long have you been like, uh, like maybe just tell me about your first one and like, what was like? Jeez, it's been I'm trying to think. Cause like events, like small, medium and large. I, I remember starting to do community events. I mean, what was it? 10 years ago or something more than now. Cause I'm in the, cause I'm in the DC area and there was a lot of groundswell around them like oh the smaller ones and then regional ones and then like oh this company would host this thing it was cool but like the larger events were always fun so anytime I could go to something that was like oh the global x or international event I mean like with what we do with agile lines it's it is what I I need those dates and I I mean we're lucky when we can figure out sure. okay when do I need to block it but that's something that we I plan around I mean, right. if, if there's anything that I want to make sure that I'm available for, it's that one. Because going back to what you said, it's like, oh, hey, oh, hey, you get to see old friends and you get to make new ones. Because it's like if, if if I'm cool with someone and they're like, hey, here's my like, all right, then we're cool. And then just that just keeps going and going and going. So I, I'd say I think the first one, I can't remember the exact first one. One I have real good memories of. Where were we? Were we Atlanta? Were we D.C.? Where were we? I want to say it was DC, but it was years ago. Was that 14, 15, somewhere around in there, somewhere around in there. Okay. Um, uh, I remember going to that one just because it was home. the reason I remember it because it's hometown. Right. Hometown. So uh, I remember I, I did something different at that one. I didn't speak at that, but I worked with uh, Dave Pryor where we did a bunch of interviews and podcasts and stuff. So I was doing like, we were doing camera work and talking yeah. with people and sitting down and interviewing people. And it was really fun. It was almost kind of, kind of like a, like a mini conference, we would say it was like, because I mean, we know conference within a conference, we never want to do that. But right. then he was, he was asked by the Alliance to do it. And so I remember being able to do that from a volunteer standpoint. And Oh, was this like prior to drunken PM? This, uh, I think drunken PM, drunken PM radio was still out, but this was something s separate. I think PMI okay. might've funded it. Yeah. And with Agile, I can't, I mean, you'll have to ask Dave, but, uh, sure. but I, rem I remember that just because it was DC and I was like, okay, home team, like, like, here we sure. go. Like, like, I remember that one really well. Um, 
I mean, I remember, you know, <laughs> parts are fuzzy, uh, but uh, <laughs> I know, right? But well, uh, it, it's 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 been a while, and it's it's really fun though. I really love it. My so I remember getting much less sleep in my earlier ones, and yes. again, I was not, I was not a young man. Like going, I mean, I was in my, you know, mid thirties. We were grown up. We were grown ups. Well, g- grown ups. <laughs> we 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 play them on TV. We right. play grown ups on TV gotcha. on Zoom. We play grown ups on Zoom. Yep. Um, the my so my first Agile Alliance was in Atlanta in sixteen. But oh, I, I remember that one. A couple like single day. I'd been to. Mm-hmm. I hadn't quite been to. Um, keep Austin agile yet. I did agile. Yeah. I kid, I did Austin in 16 as well. Yep. There was one in 15. that was like a one day thing in Dallas that I had, ju- I was like, it was almost like you hear these stories of, of the San Diego comic book con, like comic con. Mm-hmm. And you're like, man, that would be great. And then you go to like the small little regional shit that comes to your town. That's and funny. I don't know if you're a comic book guy, but like, uh, here, no, like I love comic oh, books. Oh, I'm like this is this is a great like this is a great event, and they're like, but have you been to San Diego? Mm-hmm. And I, and the very first time I was like, oh, so this is an Agile conference. They're like, kinda, exactly. but have you been to Agile? And I'm like, what do you mean? Mm-hmm. So I just figured out, and then I also figured out very quickly, like companies, not a lot of companies had money for conference budgets or right. train, not a ton of training. If they had training right. budgets, it certainly wasn't enough to cover the conference. So I'm like, well, then how do I go? Oh, you have to be a speaker. I don't know how to do that, but I will definitely learn how to be a speaker. Yep. Um, And so I had tried for probably two, three years before that to get Mm -hmm. in. I finally Mm -hmm. got in in 16, which was why that that was the first time that I was there. Um, So it's, I don't know, there's something romantic about like your first couple that you go to because you remember meeting people for the first time. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about because of different, like, because I've done the regional ones. Like, like I've, I've been meaning to get to Cincy, I've been meaning to get to Indy, but like Texas, I've, I've done the stuff in Austin, even, even the regular, a lot in the DC, you know, just bouncing around between things. Right. And then if something's happening, but uh, no, you're right. It's, it's, it was a hard sell depending on the company and the time where it's like, hey, I want to go to this thing. Wait a minute. You're, you're not going to be here for how long? And you need a hotel. What are you? How much is the ticket? Here? What it's not even for? that. Well, you know, cutthroat DC coming at you. It's like, what kind of business are you going to win for me? <laughs> no, I mean, it's like being in this position now, by the way, we're uh, like almost to the day, seven year anniversary for the company on our side. So it's like having to write checks to send people across the whatever to not for nothing. Hey, I'm going to go into a room and hear about story points again. Okay. And it's like, oh, and then we're going to go to the conference party. Okay. What'd you remember? I remember, I remember Chris Lee and Trisha Broderick in karaoke. That's what I remember. It's like, yes. okay, sweet. You know, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's, I, it's a I, hard sell. I think my first, I think my first karaoke was in San Diego. So yes, yeah, we, we were San, San We did San Diego. Oh, yeah. That was well, a, that was a good one. I, San like, Diego. Everybody was on stage singing together. Like everybody would flood the stage. Yep. Yeah, unfortunately, I had to take, I, I remember distinctly, and I can't remember which, because Scrum Alliance, we've done events in, in uh, San Diego, same with Agile Alliance. And I can't remember which one it was, but I do remember distinctly getting a text and a call that said, please take their phone away from them. <laughs> and I'm not going to say who and when. But. It's fine. It's, listen, what happens at the conference? It's like Vegas. Oh, <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's interesting because it's, you know, like you said, it's, it's, it's fun. And you remember these good memories and, you know, now that we're on these sides of things, it's, I don't know about you, but it's like, I am always thinking about like, how can we make sure like those first, those first times, like those first timers, I want them to have just the time of their, just the time of their lives. I want it to be valuable. I want it to be positive. I want them to meet people. I want them to learn things. And it's, 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 um, I mean, I'm, yeah, I mean, we both talked. There's about still this. a large percentage of attendees that are first timers every year. There's still every a large year. number of them. So, and I love it. Yeah, I, I, it. I to me, content is king. And I, yeah. so I, I am curious from mm-hmm. your perspective. Like, mm-hmm. so now that we 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 know a little more about what happens under the hood, mm-hmm. um, I don't know that I would call myself like an expert. 
you know, conference planner. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, what, like, what do you think has, I'm not, I don't want to get into like, it was better back in the day or this was Mm -hmm. good and this wasn't good. We don't have to get into that. Like, what do you think are, are the conferences adapting uh, and changing along with the landscape of our work? Do you feel like, like, what do you feel is being refreshed and updated every year? Are we getting the updated ideas that you were that 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 really matter or is it less about the content for you i don't know just kind of general thoughts about what's mm-hmm. kind of changed what's kind in of the changed. landscape uh, a couple of things and from from the attendee also from the organizer standpoint so so attendee standpoint first if it's your first one you're probably going off of like oh i'm going to see some people and you're probably looking at the program and you see people that you've noticed on on like books or you've seen videos or you've seen them at a meetup and it's like oh i've always wanted to meet so and so and I tell a lot of people, I say, never meet your heroes, because um, <laughs> unfortunately, and 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 you know, my friends right now who are, I, I can think of a few that would be like, don't say it, I'm not going to. But it's like, it's like you're not as cool as you think you are. Like, take it easy. Like, yeah. Like only a few of us sign autographs, so take it easy. And even then, most not everybody wants them. Um, so it's it's like, you know, for the first time attendee being able to go and check out some things. I think that if they're looking to like connect with someone or learn about a topic, it's like that. I I still think that we're doing, at least I know everyone works really hard on, I think people are doing a really good job on that. Um, I think that on the organizer side, I think, you know, the world's different now. I mean, here we are hanging out doing this. And like three years ago, we, we maybe probably be on the phone, just hanging out. Um, and now, so thinking about from a, uh, a safety standpoint and a travel standpoint and being conscious of that, I think that's a wrinkle that we have to think about and letting people attend from other parts in the world. Cause frankly, like, oh, are we going to have in-person versus like a mix versus virtual only? It's like in-person hits different, I think. And yeah. having a camera in the back of the room is, well, it's cool to see in. it's a little bit of FOMO where you're like, ah, I kind of wish I was there. And you know, some events that I've worked with, they're like, oh, well, maybe we should have a hybrid contingent in this and time zone. It's like, it's never going to get the attention it should. And if, and if it does, it's going to be a different experience than the people in the room. So it's like, I, I'm not a fan of, this is just me personally, this personal opinion of people like, we're great at it. That's great. But, but it's kind of tough to pull that off to make sure that everyone has an even and positive experience. And, uh, you know, on the flip side, the, the, the virtual element, right. some people have got the virtual stuff on lockdown and it's a wonderful experience but they've they've tuned it in for like that market and those challenges so i think i think that people overall i think there's a been a real good um a real good kind of stay with the times at least from those standpoints what do you think i well i feel like if people give my personal thought is if you give them the right reasons to show yeah there will be enough people now again at the height of attendance i mean we're talking 3,000 people Yep. there maybe at More. the height of attendance and that was pre-COVID. Yeah. Um, you know, and at, there's no, like, there's no putting, throwing shade on anybody saying like attendance, it's not as high as it, what it used to be. No. And so the, the question is like, okay, well, A, like, is what is the most important thing? Is the most important thing to get the most attendees? Is it to create a diverse experience? Is it to create something that uh, and I, what I've learned in all of the conversations since then is that yeah, I can't plan a conference for everybody. No, I can say, no. hey, I can't make anybody submit a session on this topic. Right. We've we've tried to add some more curation mm-hmm. to some stuff over the years to say, mm-hmm. hey, nobody's submitting on this. I'd really like to see this. Uh, I I did Agile Essentials last year, and I basically ran the track. I basically created a track that I wanted to attend and I didn't attend mm-hmm. my sessions because I wanted to. I mean, because I I had to, I did it mm-hmm. because like, no, this is great. I get to listen to Barcom make fun of transformations and how mm-hmm. silly some people have made them, mm-hmm. but it's going to be still productive and tongue in cheek and let's not take ourselves too seriously and all that. Right. right. Like this year, uh, we've got we've got the comic the comic agile uh, agile I forget how everybody pronounces it. Luke Sean has come in like to again like not something that would have normally happened. Like right. are we you know by by like will you make content that people are like no it's cool because for me the lowest one was the year where I spent most of the time in hallways 
because mm-hmm. I was there working the conference. Also, my company was paying me to be there because I was yep. with the Accenture at the time. But at the right. same time, like I I wasn't drawn to sessions. And that right. was probably says something more about me than the content itself. Mm-hmm. But if it's me, if I'm, I always say, if I'm feeling it, someone else has got to be feeling it, right? Yeah. You're never the only one feeling something. Yeah. So that's, which is probably the main reason why to go to the conference to be like, I felt this before. Am I the only one? You're going to hear resounding. No, you're not the only one. And also, yes. And here's another story about this or this or this. Mm-hmm. And then we all chat, you know, share stories and stuff, but there does need to be something that you can bring back other than like, man, I got, I got to sing the sweetest karaoke song. Yeah. It needs to be more than that. Right? The, there are years. I can't remember which, which year it was, but I went, and this is for ours, Fragile Alliance. Guess how many sessions I went to? Zero. Mm. And it was super productive. It, that it, can was happen. All, it was all small group, one-on-one hallway. And I mm-hmm. came home with like six or seven contracts. And it's like, okay. like like, But I went with, okay, I'm going specifically because like, hey, I'm going to be here. We need to meet. Hey, I'm going to be here. We need to get together. Hey, we need to get the conversation going on this. And it's like, all right. And like from like a content and different things, people like, like, why don't you go to more sessions or why, you know, this It's like, I was like, I'm probably working with that speaker to help them on their sessions. Like I, I, I know it's in there, all, you know, a bunch of times. Cause I, I try to help folks out and um, you know, I, I could go and do that, but like for a conference like that one, I'm thinking of, I can't remember the name, which year, but it's like, I went, I was going in with a very, very focused purpose of, I need to come home with this and this and this and for at that point of the company it's like this is this is what i'm going for other times you know it'd be like hey i'm just going to soak in as much um you know as much as i can and i mean, I mean guess yeah. we're, we're lucky because we have so many contacts and friends we get to see it's like oh it's catching up and you know right. having a good time and and you know because you've been to it enough you know it's a little different yeah, uh, you, you bring up a good point that I don't think people realize how much business actually happens at the conference. Huge. I, 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 I don't know about like, if, like in Austin, how much business happens versus mm-hmm. being an entire week in, mm-hmm. you know, wherever right. AA's got set up. But uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, all you have to have is I'm there, I've got a microphone and I'm recording or I'm there and I've got a place to just sit and chit chat. And really, honestly, you can, you can attend one session a day or no sessions a day and feel completely productive. Absolutely. And you can also not want any of that. You could want, you could say, I don't care about the exo expo booths. Yep. Um, other than showing up when there's free food there and I like, I'm not buying, I'm not here to buy. You eat that pudding? Yeah, exactly. Sorry. Like I'm not here to buy anything. I'm not here to, I'm not here to sign a contract, to anything. I'm just yep. here to learn about mm-hmm. the best way to help my organization. Yep. It's just, there's so much, there's so much else that you can do. Yes. Right? That is, that isn't when you're in a session. Well, so much of it is, I think, you know, kind of go back to what we were talking about earlier about like your first ones and you have good memories. It's almost being overwhelmed by the amount of, of options that you have. And so, mm-hmm. by the way, folks, if you're still listening to us, thank you. Listen to, to two people some with some pretty cool first names. They have um, they you know, have I know, I know. But being able to think about like, okay, like how am I going to spend my day or how am I going to do this? And being able to look at the program and be like, oh, there might be this or, oh, I'm looking at this. And, um, and and for any of you, if you come and you see any any of us who who spend any minute, let alone a lot of minutes, trying to put this on, just ask questions. Just just sure. feel free to ask questions to our listeners. You know, if you see us, hey, I'm thinking about this. Who should I go see? And and oh, you like oh, you should you should catch that one. I find myself doing that a lot, where it's like, all right, where should I go at nine o'clock, or, or where should I go at one o'clock? Be like, sure. right, like like hey, my buddy's going here, and you know what? She's amazing. You would love this talk. Yeah. Go see her. She's, you know, and just try to like throw sunshine and like help that mm-hmm. out. It's, it's always awesome for that. But then like between one thing I think is personally, I think is great is that when, when folks will find each other and like, Hey, we're going to post up in this area or here's a dedicated area for some like technical open space. That's going to just be like chilling there all week or like, Oh, here's where this group hangs out. And like to be able to float around and do that. And it's just, I think it's great. I think it's great. Yeah. You need uh, multiple days to do that. You can't do that on one day. You, should, you know, you got to have at least a few to figure out where you are. 
Well, and, yes. And for those that, so I, it, it took it, um, it, I was in Vegas at the, um, at the, um, Paris? Oh, the, no. te- the tech well conference that they do. There. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Got it. Um, I was, I was at, I was at by the pool in Caesar's palace, um, with some of, some of our, some of our besties there. Uh-huh. And I remember Barcombe basically, basically taking me by the shoulders and sitting me down going, let me tell you how to start your own business. It's <laughs> far too, it is, you've waited long enough. I understand where you're coming from. It's time to start talking about that. It's time to start. So like, if you're like, hey, listen, I don't do the contracting. I'm not an independent. I work for someone. I like my job. There's a lot of uncertainty right now. Great. Mm-hmm. Still come and find one of us and go, hey, how hard is it to start your business? What is it that you needed? What is it that you did? Because, you know, I'm, I am, I, I have no, I have no branded hoodies on me. I'm not that baller of, of listen yet, to this but guy. <laughs> I, hey, listen, I, it's, it's, I was going to make the joke. Regardless. No, it's fine. Get a bathroom. So, I should get a bathroom. Now. But there it's, it's actually harder than a bathroom. Yes. Yeah, you said robots. It, nice. It's actually not as if, if you just spend the time to like talk to people, mm-hmm. you can figure it out. Um, and also, like, there's many types of businesses that we run, right? Like, I don't do trainings, right? Like, there are some people that they want to employ multiple people. Yep. They're more of a, they're they're like a framework trainer and they like, yep. they, they sell that. Yep. Some do a mix of training and, and everything. Consulting. Everything, some all over. Great consulting, like me. There are some people that are trying to build their own platform on the side. Every, there's all different versions of that. And you're like, well, I don't really like training, but I am. I do have this interesting thing idea for an app. There you go. Who do I? I guarantee you, they're all going to be there. Like Everyone's going to be there. Anybody that has any of those things, mm-hmm. they're going to be there. So, um, and we no nobody gets any shade thrown at them for saying like, "I like your tool, but I'd like to build a better one." Because all of us are like, "Cool, the tools are meant to be used and then set aside until the next one comes along." So. Yep you know, what, whatever. Um, okay. So you brought up the, you brought up the, I, I don't know where to go or I know I, who do I go see or whatnot. Right. Yeah. Like this is a perfect intro to agile advice. Right. So the, the, I guess, tell me your opinion of like the history of it, because I always, it, when I coming earlier, it was referred to as like coach's corner, right. I'm here for coaching. And then there was the decision that like, well, Maybe you don't need coaching. Maybe you need to talk about something, or maybe you just need like tell me about this person or or whatever. And so it was kind of rebranded as advice, just to say like, hey, you need someone to talk to. You heard something cool in a session, and you don't feel like going to the next session and chatting with someone about it. Hey, we've got agile advice, kind of a thing. So I guess tell me tell me your take on it and why you like, because I know you in particular have an affinity for agile advice. So tell, tell me your, your take on maybe not, but. Well, I can give you the, take. I can give you the whole history. Cause I was asked to start it. Wow. Um, yeah. I don't know if you know, do you know the whole right. history with it? I don't know. I, I, probably I can go and then I can fill it in. This will be good. For, I can tell you and then listeners as well. So in a lot of different um, conferences, different organizations would offer some things out and, for those of you who are listening, if you hadn't seen my name before, I do quite a bit of work with Scrum Alliance as well. Right. Uh, the Global Scrum Gathering, there was always Coach's Corner slash Coach's Clinic. You will see places do that. Um, sometimes it is a sponsored thing by Scrum Alliance, where it's like, oh, I can talk to some coaches. And right. so for those of you who are going to the Global Scrum Gathering in Portland, I know we're trying to keep it around that. I'll be out there as well. I'm on the program team for that too. Uh, this was a, oh, hey, spot coaching type thing. Well, uh, this is 2016. I got approached and uh, Agile Alliance asked me and they said, hey, would you consider doing something like this? And I asked, I said, okay, people that I know already do something kind of like that. And they're like, well, we want to do something a little different. So it wasn't even as much, let's take it and rebrand it. This, is a, this was a brand new effort. They're like, we want to do something completely different. And at the time, it actually had a different name. They actually named it something. There's another name in there. They called it Agile Therapy. Oh, funny you mentioned that. I didn't pick the name. They said, we want to do this. And I said, okay. And the end of that arc is people were 
not happy with the name because because somebody doesn't like iced coffee. I'm getting the email. It's, it's just kind of how things are sometimes. Okay. But it was like, oh, there's this and this and this. And it's like, fine, 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 fine. We hear you here. So it was rebranded after the first time it was out. And it has since, since become Agile Advice. People make this association that, oh, that's the coach's clinic. That's the coach's corner. I can't, I got to make this 100% clear for our listeners. This is a completely different effort. And if someone's like, oh, I used to run this, uh, you actually haven't because I have been in charge of this since its inception. So if you're asking about Agile advice, me and my team have been putting this on since it's been created. Yeah. So, so the original ask was, can we put aside some space? where we could ask people to volunteer their time. And just like you said, it's like, hey, I went to a session and I want to kind of bounce some ideas. And when it comes to coaching, and it's funny you mentioned that earlier, like with Audacious and everything, this idea of coaching and agile coaching and professional coaching, it's it's a bigger topic than this call right here. But sometimes like, look, I just need an ear or I want to ask somebody, hey, can I get some advice? And if you're coming from the places that I've been schooled in, it's like coaches shouldn't give advice. You create the space, et cetera, et cetera, all that great stuff, but from a professional coaching standpoint. And it's like, look, we don't have enough time to form that human bond. I just need to, hey, X, Y, or Z, what should I think of? It's like, hey, you got to be careful about this, careful about this, talk about this. All right, cool. There wasn't an opportunity to do that, like in any kind of structured format. So it was like, sure. imagine if you could stop by, say, hey, I'd love to talk to somebody about this technology, people, doesn't matter. Could I get someone's time? And so we're like, wow, if we could get volunteers, advisors to come in and offer up an hour or two or more of their time to be available, they could talk to people, you know, one after another. And um, it's a great way for advisors to get involved in the event, spend some time, and it's a volunteer effort. You know, people volunteer their time. Uh, and we are going to be having the form. Everyone's, the veterans that are out there like, Chris, where's the form? That's going to be coming here in a little bit. We're, we're, we're making some, str we're streamlining a little bit of it. But people say, I would like to come. And on like Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm available from this time. And they say, I'd love to give some thoughts on, on, on technical leadership or, you know, this one particular people problem or, oh, you're thinking about anything. And so we on our side, the Agile Advice team, all these wonderful advisors who volunteer their time, we kind of create a nice spread all throughout the event where it's like, if you show up and you want to talk about this, then we probably have someone you can talk to. And so, so it, it, it lets people who want to volunteer their time and talk with others, they can get involved. For attendees who are like, hey, I have this problem. I literally just need someone for a little bit of space to talk to them. Sure. And then they can do that and they get to meet somebody. We've had people come up and be like, I would love to talk to somebody about this. And it's like, wow, well, the person who wrote the most important book on that topic is available right now. Would you like to talk to them? They're like, yes. It's like, here you go. And, yeah. and, and, and then you see those human connections go. And so it's been, and I'll throw it back in just a second. I just want to add this one little point. Uh, it's been wonderful to see it grow and evolve over the years where the amount of advisors, we don't say coaches, the amount of advisors that want to get involved and volunteer, that's grown. More attendees who come to the conference, they say, we want to get involved. You know, I'd love to talk to people. My team has grown year after year for people to go ahead and manage all that. Like we come out of the booth at times if we need to. Um, but to be able to stop by, you know, and talk with folks for the majority of the conference, it's something that... Um, I think it's pretty cool just to see, you know, have that type of an offering for attendees and advisors as well. I just think it's really fun. Yeah. And yes. And, and I will, I will state publicly that it's not been the, the one conversation we on the program team have talked about this year is like, you've not done the best job of internal messaging. We do some before the event, we do a little bit, right. Mm -hmm. But we don't do enough when you get there hey remember all this cool shit we have yep do you remember it like if you think that you're going to go to a 75 minute session on pick a topic anything anything pick any topic and you're yeah. gonna so will you get good information yes yeah will you get some great stories yes yeah you're not going to get a step-by-step -step way of how to do it all of that within 75 minutes and then land the plane and also get Q and a kind of it. Like it's yeah. some people have so much content. They can't even do a Q and a they're like, find me in the hallway afterwards. I never do that because there's only do that. so like, <laughs> if you need, if you, you just go, Hey, someone just talked to me about this. What, do, how do I, how do I do that? Like they were like right. this and this, mm -hmm. and I just don't know how to connect the dots. Yeah. That's okay. It's okay that you don't know how to connect the dots. Totally right. Fine. Some people, you might, you might spend thousands of dollars at a, or the consultancy to get a, an answer on how to do that. And you can just walk down the, down the, 
down the hallway and for go, free. Hey, Lee, can yeah. you find someone smart? I, I got idea. I got questions. Absolutely. Yeah. The fact that, and it's there for attendees mm -hmm. and it's like, I think it's because we always get to what's this, what's this. And, take, and then it just, and then it's just like, mm -hmm. And it's just, it's, it's just fun. We, we've, we've gotten into a space right now. And just like you said, it's like someone will come out of a session. Hey, I saw a session on this. I'd love to talk further about it. And imagine if yeah. that presenter is on, is in the roster. Cause that's happened. You know, it's not a guarantee, but it's like, maybe they did. How cool is that? Or, I mean, frankly, off to the side, someone's like, do you know? And then I'll just grab the cell phone. I'm like, Hey, you got 15 minutes. Come over. No, they come. Yep. Can you <laughs> cash in a favor? Well, and uh, you know, it depends on the year. Like, mm -hmm. I, I somehow we managed to sweet talk Jeff Patton into into coming hanging out with us. Like, you ain't gonna see him that often, folks. Nope. Uh, his nope. time's hard. His time is precious and hard to find. Yep. He's nice as hell, though. So be nice to him, and you know, listen. You know, yeah. And you get a chance and, to talk to Jeff Patton, do most of the listening. That's what I would say. That is some a lot. That's what we all, someone we all look up to. You should listen. Just listen. Yeah. But there's, there's a, a million. Of, I still remember. Um, I remember in Atlanta, I remember there being, it was like a, it was in between sessions. Everybody's mm -hmm. kind of in this large area kind of looking around where they're going to go next and stuff. And I'm standing there and I go, okay you're going to go say hi to Esther Derby without sounding like a fanboy because ah! I'd only interacted with her via, via Twitter at that point. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I walk up to her and I say, Hey, I'm really sorry to bug you. I'm trying to not be a weirdo about this. I just wanted to introduce myself. And she goes, you look different from your picture on Twitter. Chris looked me right in the eyes. Didn't look at my name tag, looked me right in the eyes and said, you look different than your Twitter picture, Chris. And I went, Oh, okay. And then I'm, you're not supposed to, how am I not supposed to freak out right now? No. Oh. Right. <laughs> the, the week is filled with that. Like a yeah. Lee's Lee's room is going to have people filled with just that. Or they're like, Hey, come back at two o'clock. I got, I got a text out to them. I bet you I can get them here around then come back yeah. after then Yep. or, or whatever. Right. Yep. Like, we know where everybody is. Everybody they're, knows where everybody is. is. Yeah. Hey, you got 15? Sure, I got 15. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, I, I will, as busy, and this, by the way, this, for our listeners out there, for all the people that put so much work and so much energy and so much time into putting on this event, I can hardly at all, of all the people, Chris, that we know, I cannot imagine someone not being able to take a couple moments just to connect and talk and maybe show mm -hmm. you the right way. So please do not, Please do not think that you can't go up to say hi or introduce yourself to somebody and say hello. I mean, obviously pick your spot. I mean, if, if, if someone's off fighting with their spouse, maybe don't interrupt them. Um, you know, it's just like, yeah, I'm sorry. I, just, I know that everybody hears in tears and all, but I just wanted to let you know, you know, read the room a little bit, but, um, but everybody would be able to, you know, don't, don't, uh, no, we're all just humans. Everyone's, everyone's human. Just go say so hi. I I, I, I do know that again, when, when you have an industry that's founded off of like self-awareness and if you want it, you can't help anybody if you haven't helped yourself first kind of a thing, that. like, yep. the, trust me, if they didn't want to talk to people, they wouldn't come that year. Yep. Like some people just aren't feeling it yeah. and, or they've had a heavy work schedule yeah. or they've got some family stuff. Going Something's on. going on. Yeah. They wouldn't be there. Right. But, if they're there, they got time for you. Yeah. They, they just about and again back to the back to agile advice it's like the fact that people will be like i would love to do three sessions in a row it's like are you sure it's like yeah i was like look are you sure it's like come on man like i got you it's like okay and and, and they will stay and just graciously graciously talk to person after person after person and it's just it's great to see just we're gonna make some space for you to get 15 minutes of someone's time that you've only read their book Right. Just to get just to get their perspective on something that's pertinent to what you heard or what you read, it's um it's a pretty cool offering. And so so folks, please not you know I mean I know part of it's the tough, but I got to plug it a little bit. Find us like like please. I uh I have to talk to Yvonne. She owes me the the exact spot on the floor plan, but I'm I'm very small and easy to miss. That's a, that's being sarcastic. Uh, please find me if you see me or anybody else who might know me. Chris is just, just like find us. Person, yeah, so it's, it's it's I stick out. Find, find someone that that could that could uh 
that could catch you in 40 yards pretty quickly. It's, it's, it's Chris Lee. And we would love to see you like, come on by, say hello. And, and it's a chance to connect and people can come back multiple times. We we just, you know, people will put up a session and this is, here's a funny story. Actually, you want to know something we learned. We, we put up the board and you know, it's pretty low fi you know, like, you know, sure. sticky stickies and markers and my boards. Imagine that, you know, <laughs> and uh, uh, someone once signed up for like eight sessions and it's like, you're like, okay, cool. People are interested, but like, because it's a limited capacity, it's like, no, you can't say you want to take eight trips to the buffet. So one thing we learned, it's like, you can put your name up there once, have a talk. And then if you would like to sign up again later, then we can talk about doing it then because we want to make it that as many people as possible, distinct people can come back because people would no show. And it's like, if, if, if I cashed in a favor to get the author of a book to change their time to one o'clock because you put in a card that you said this. And I was like, I know that this is a good thing. And it's a little smoother than that, but sometimes I do that. And then you're no show. You're not helping me out. Yeah. Um, you know? And so it's like, so that's why it's like one, you know, it's it happens. It happens. Oh, oh, th- things you could, you could get a contract and, and not be able to jump on when you're supposed to record. And then you can have <laughs> the same thing happen earlier in the week. I still oh it. my God. I love a, I love a good, I love a good callback. I, so I will, I will say this, like I, it, it is not because I respect the hell out of you. It's not because like you're really good at what you do, but I, like, I firmly believe the two things that I was super passionate about this year was creating an actual real open space that see, see Jake's hand going up my back. Making yep. my mouth I was going to say, right. Like, oh yeah, Mr. I have a, I have a X step plan to mm-hmm. like getting open space the way that like, I got I, this. He had me eating ahead of his hand earlier this year when we were, I love Jake. Year, we were talking about Jake, it. if you're listening, love you, buddy. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And you owe me a string cheese and <laughs> um, the, um, but the, but that and advice are something that we don't do enough like plugging of a free resource. Yes, you're paying for a conference. You were paying for here's a benefit. paying for a, a hotel room. You yep. had to get on a flight to get there. Yep. Yes, I get it. All that is money and money that not everybody has laying around. Trust me. Yeah. Thank you I for like coming. The fact that I work for I work for Agile Alliance to help put these on so mm-hmm. that I don't have to do that. Trust me, I get that. That yeah. said, that said, you would pay far more to get some of the answers that you can get from, you know, a consultancy and some biz dev guy that's going to be calling or per or person be calling you kind of a thing. Like you just the content and, and free transformation advice or free, make this stuff work at my office. You're not going to get that just sitting down the hallway. No. And, and the fact that the person that you might be able, that might volunteer their time in another engagement would right. charge you for that. And they're for volunteering sure. it. I mean, it's, it's like a lot of, just, I love what I do. It's wonderful. Time is money. And yeah. it's like, you know, I mean, just like this morning, we're trying, we're trying to get some engagements done and all, but it's like, Hey, we're volunteering, volunteering. And it's like to get access to folks that, that are on this roster it's a wonderful benefit. It's an offering that like, I'm just, I'm just glad to bring it in. Like when we do it, I mean, I always basically around Thanksgiving, I always send up the flare. We, we do it again. I, I I always wait for that. I'm like, we do it again. Cause, cause the, the beauty for, for the board, thanks to the board, to the program team every year, those new people, but thank you again for everything everyone does. I want to make it as smooth for them. Like, do you want me to do it? Okay, I got it. Here we go. And it's I'm 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 very grateful for that opportunity because it's pretty it, it's it's nice and smooth and it's like here's something I literally it's just a space, some tables, some stuff, yeah, and some wonderful people who get it. And um, you know, it's it's a fun way to be involved in the conference. So if you were thinking about even if you swing by to say hello, folks, please at least come by and say hi to the team. That's right. Say hi. That's right. And if you don't know what to ask Chris about, you can ask him about this. Last question. Hmm. Where in the world did you develop this like buttery smooth radio voice with a non-regional diction, regional accent <laughs> diction? Like, I don't know where you're from. I don't know what you're doing, but you've got this timber to your voice. There's no drawl to your, like, there's no y'all that comes out of your mouth like me. Like you, I'm not saying you have a face for radio, but you definitely have a voice for radio. <laughs> I appreciate that. No, I, um, 
it's it's funny because so I'm I'm on the East Coast, uh, in right outside of the Washington D.C. area. Uh, my father is actually from New York. He's from Queens. My okay. mother is from the North Shore area of Boston. So if you've got any Massachusetts, like Danvers, Danvers, Beverly, that area. Okay. When I'm around my friends from the different parts of the U.S., it's hard for me not to slip into it every once in a while. It's because, you know, you hang out. I say y'all sure. quite a bit. True story. When we were in London on vacation years ago, I sat down and I was at, and I'm from Virginia. And one of my favorite things to eat, I love grits like cheese grits. And I sure. sat down and I looked at the waitress and I said, excuse me, y'all got grits. And I said it like, I said, y'all got grits. And my wife looked at me, she said, you just said, y'all got grits yeah. in downtown. And the waitress looked at me and said, oh, you're from America. It's like, yeah, you got, <laughs> but it's, it, no, it's, it's, um, never been prouder. No, it's, I mean, hey, it's what I eat, but it's like, I got friends all over the world that I hang out with. I'm just, I'm used to, um, I'm used to having to talk to people from all over. And sure. so because of that easy, you know, this is just, just what I'm used to. So I appreciate the comments on it. I, I have friends. My wife would, would not exactly agree all the time. Cause, cause we had a, we had some folks we were working with once. It was like, I could listen to Chris read a phone book and, and, and Christine chimes in. She's like, I've done it. It's not so good. <laughs> Everyone yeah, but, starts laughing. It's she's like, I have to listen to one all the time. It's not that they, good. They've seen us at our most embarrassing moment. That's not, absolutely. That's not fair. Absolutely. You know, I listen. I I my <laughs> first job out of college was the weekend sports anchor for an NBC affiliate. And oh, I, I would have loved that. Oh, and, and and I had, style? so I had to I had to shove every bit of draw down my down my gullet as best I could. Mm. I, again. I don't always, it's like, it's like a dial. I can turn it up and down sometimes, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. there are words that comes out of my mouth and my wife will stop who grew up in St. Louis will stop and turn and look at me and go, did you just hear what came out of your mouth? And then she starts, and then her and, and our, our oldest son are start mocking me. And I'm like, y'all know that I have feelings, right? Like this um, is not yeah, this hurts. These are these are these are these are these are, these are verbal knives that you are throwing into my chest right now. It's the no visage of, of of hurt is hap is right in front of you, and like, <laughs> God bless. Yeah. Well, oh, it's fun, man. No, be, the, the, that's the that is the that is the tough part about all the like back to what we were you saying before about like in person, virtual, and all like that. It's one thing when you're like listening, because are we are we going to do video for this one? I don't know if we were. Or are you just going to do audio I for this? List. We might have some clips, but for the most part, it's, it's fine. Work. But it's like most of the time you only get this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, when there's a mic, you can do fun things anytime. Like I actually normally when I'm in a room, I don't work with a mic. It's like because I'm I can, you know, but it's like I, I can, can forget, yeah. I, I can go out over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people normally pretty well in a easy to listen way. But it's um, it, it's like when I have a mic, I can do a lot more tricks. So it's, sure. uh, it's, it's always fun. And just being able to do, you know, like we're just talking like here in a studio, it, it's a little, it's a little different. So I feel like you can see someone, it's like, Oh, right. okay. And you know, it's like, Oh, okay. There's that. So it's, um, no, I, I never, I never did any calm. I never did anything, but I, I've always been in, I've been in front of crowds for a lot of my life. So yeah, kind of used to kind of used to the public, um, <laughs> speak the, and talk and sing and play and video games oh, and all, all the that. musicals so, growing up uh, uh, that i had to do the I, I you can't i've never met a stranger because i was shoved in front of strangers as a kid and told there you go 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 act go act funny go um go make a laugh. chris lee where can people find you if they want to find you uh, if people want to find me, I'm I'm pretty active out on those social medias, all that stuff. So good place to look at LinkedIn. So if you look at Chris Lee and the last name's two letters, L-I, very easy one to find. You'll see a bald person sitting there with their arms folded, kind of like this. Very easy to find. Uh, you can find me there. I'm also on Twitter. Uh, the handle is Real Chris Lee, again, L-I. Easy to find there. Twitter and LinkedIn are great. Uh, but also, if you want to see a little bit about what we're doing, you can take a look at our company's website. That's sparkplugagility.com. The bathrobe, aka hoodie I'm wearing right now that Chris was and I were joking about earlier. Uh, you can see some of the stuff we do. It's uh, it's real fun to engage with the community across so many different things we were talking about before. Consulting, coaching, speaking, MC, do a lot of that stuff. People call for training as well. Uh, one of the things that we're the most excited about here in 23 
a lot of my energy goes into uh, helping to grow and develop aspiring and practicing instructors. So people who want to build workshops, build their own classes, submit to conferences like we're talking about here, working with folks who want to do that and want to get better in it. That's, that's what's really, that's what's getting me out of bed for the last couple of years. So, so stuff like that, we have some programs out there. It's called the trainer immersion program. It's, it's our crown jewel. Um, we, we rolled out three cohorts of it here in 23. So if you like to build stuff or you want to get better at it, uh, please feel free to look us up. Um, we're really excited for the June cohort and, uh, we got some coming up this fall as well. So if, if that's kind of what you'd like to do, folks, I'd love to see, oh. love to see in the classroom. Oh. I there, there are people that we both know that well, I think me included that could use that. So I, I, uh, may need to, may need to sock away some money for you. But um, we, and we can figure out something. So it's, 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 it's our best work. At everybody. I really, really, really respect Chris and I'm thankful for his time. So, uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, thank you, buddy. the, the Chris squared podcast will, will end now. And, um, We'll see you in, we'll see you all in Orlando this year, gang. Thanks for listening, folks. August 31st. Lil Baby presents. It's only us, Tori. Made it out the treasure this time. At Capital One Arena. Get ready for an epic summer. Lil Baby's IOU Tour has finally <laughs> touched down. It's Lil Baby live in concert. Featuring the Tim LaRoy, Glow Bella, Rilo Rod Tree, and Honcho. And Honcho. Tickets are on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. Brought to you by Mammoth Live and AG Touring.